Well, hi everyone. Uh, this video has a very long title. My apologies, but everything is needed in that title in order to explain what's going on. We are supposed to, in this video, find the equation. So an equation is it's going to be a straight line, so it's going to be in this form. A straight line is in this form here, and I have videos on this, in case this is confusing, where you have y equals some slope with an x beside it, plus a y-intercept. So we're going to come up with an equation that follows these, uh, what the title says here. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Remember, a perpendicular line is one that is hitting another line at 90 degrees, okay? And a bisector is when it hits or cuts through that other line exactly in the middle, exactly in the middle of this line right here. So that would be a perpendicular bisector if it sliced through right in the middle. So we're supposed to do this, come up with an equation of a perpendicular bisector of the side, so one side, of a triangle given three vertices or given three points. So let's quickly plot these three points and see what we can come up with here, okay? So S is negative 6, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, right there. There's point S, negative six, negative three. Then we have point T, which is five, four. So five across, one, two, three, four. Oops, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, there we go. What a bummer if I had made a mistake on that. Have to redo the whole video. Five comma four, there we go. And then the other the last plotted point would be 7 across and 4 down. So 7 across and 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that is point U. 7, negative 4. I'm going to quickly connect these with a straight line just so that we can have a good look. We've got that from there to there. Oops, it's not perfect, but hey, it's better than me drawing, trying to draw a straight line. I'm terrible at it, especially doing it on a computer. It's very tough. Okay, there's our triangle. <clears throat> we are supposed to find the equation, and let's read that part right here, right here. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of side TU. So TU is right here. Okay, can you see that? I'm going kind of following it and tracing it right here. TU is this line right here. So we're going to come up with a line that is a perpendicular bisector to this thing, and it's going to be right in the middle of this line. I just drew a red line there just to kind of guess what we're looking at. Um, I don't want that to stay there right now because <clears throat> we're going to find the exact location of that line, and then we're going to come up with an equation. So the first thing we could do, let's see, there's two things we could do. First of all, perpendicular. Well, a line that is perpendicular to these two points, or this line right here. If you're given two points, remember, and this comes from previous videos that I have, and you're welcome to watch those first. If you have two points, and you need to find the slope of these two points, what we're going to do is find the slope of this line, and then we're going to do something called the negative reciprocal, or opposite reciprocal. Because when you take a slope, let's say the slope is 3 over 4. When you take it and you flip it and you take the opposite sign that it is right now, so I flipped it and I changed it to a negative, this slope and this slope are going to hit each other at a perpendicular angle, or in other words a 90 degree angle. Okay? So <clears throat> let me get rid of that. Let's find the slope of this line. Okay, and we could just count. We could just literally count and say, here's the rise, here's the run. Let's do that really quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two. So the slope here is going to be negative four because it's going downhill. And eight over two, if you take eight divided by two, you get four. So <clears throat> if we do this, we should get negative 4 as our slope. Let's do it the other way, just in case it would have been a little tricky. Let's find the slope. Remember, to find the slope, sometimes they call that m, 
to find the slope, we have to take the rise and subtract. So the rise being the y values, some people write it like this, y2, y2 minus y1. I don't know what happened there. <clears throat> there we go. And on the bottom we have x2 minus x1. So <clears throat> to find the slope, we take 4 minus negative 4. That would give us 8. And the x values, 5 minus 7 is negative 2. So the slope of this line, so the slope of this line is negative 4. Exactly what we just counted over here, okay? This just confirmed it though. So we know our slope is negative 4. Now we also want to, um, the slope of this line is negative 4, so let's take the perpendicular slope to negative 4. All we do is take, pretend negative 4 is like negative 4 over 1, and we're going to flip it, okay? Just like the video that I have on perpendicular bisectors, or perpendicular lines and slopes, and all we have to do is flip it. It'd be 1 over 4, and it would be positive. So we know the slope is going to go 1 up and 4 across, 1 up and 4 across. The problem is we don't know where it cuts through. We need to know where it cuts through this line. Where it cuts through this line is in the middle between these two points. So I have another video that's called how to find the midpoint, okay, on a line. And we're going to do that really quickly. I will do it in another color. Let's try red. So the midpoint, all you do is you add up the x values, x1 and x2, and then divide it by 2. Because when you're finding the middle of something, you just add things up and divide by 2, and that tells you the middle between two things. Do the same thing with the y values. Take y1 plus y2 and divide that by 2. So let's do that. I'm going to do it kind of quickly. So we're going to add up the x values. 5 plus 7 is 12, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, I'll say it again. 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Let's get the y values. Add up 4 plus negative 4. Well, 4 plus negative 4. That happens to be 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. So this is our midpoint. I'm going to put a red dot along this line here at 6, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's exactly what we probably would have guessed. Just by looking at this line, you could tell it probably was right here, but I just did it this way to show you in case things aren't so easy when you get your questions in your math class. Okay, <clears throat> so we don't have a lot of room here, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, sorry someone was at the door there. Okay, what I'm going to do is erase some of this stuff so that we have more room as we continue on. Where is my eraser? Here it is. So I'm going to erase all of this. Hopefully you saw what we were doing. I guess we know where the point is. We know where the midpoint is. And we have to remember what the slope of the line is. Okay, so what I've kept is this, neg this one quarter because that is the slope that we want. So the slope is going to go right there for our equation. And the y-intercept we don't quite know yet. Okay, so we know this point right here is at 6, 0. So we know an x value and a y value, which we can put into this equation right here. The x value is 6, so instead of x, we're going to put 6. For the slope, we're going to put this 1 quarter. Okay, this part is what we don't know. We don't know where this line is going to cut through the x-axis. We can kind of guess though. Perpendicular bisector. Hmm. I don't know. It's going to be somewhere down here probably. Maybe right here where I'm pointing. But anyway, we're going to find this out. And the y value, well that's just the y value right here which is 0. So we're going to put in these or substitute all of these numbers into this equation for a line and we're going to come up with the y-intercept, and then we can say, boy, I'm getting these emails here, and then we can say what this equation is going to be. So I'll do this in, uh, let's see, I'll do it in the color green. Here we go. So instead of y, we're going to put 0. 
instead of m, we're going to put a quarter. Whoops. There we go. That's my quarter. I'm going to put a bracket around it. We're going to multiply that by 6. I'm just putting brackets here to show the multiplication. And then we have b. Okay, now that we've done all of that, I'm going to get rid of this. There we go. So, what is 1 quarter times 6? You have to know how to multiply a fraction times a whole number. Well, the answer would be 6 over 4. Or if you wanted to reduce that, 6 over 4 would really be 3 over 2. I'm just reducing it. Okay. To get the 3 over 2 to the other side so that we get b all by itself, we're just going to subtract 3, o 3 over 2 from this side. And we're going to be left with b is negative 3 over 2. Okay, so b is all by itself. I just subtracted 3 over 2, negative 3 over 2. So here we are. Negative 3 over 2 would be, well, if you change that into a decimal, it would be negative 1.5. So it would be 1 and a half, right about there. So if we were to draw a line, let's see if I can find a red. If we were to draw a line kind of through there, sorry, it's not red, but this line here is a perpendicular bisector. So it cuts through at a 90 degree angle and it's bisecting through this point right here so we know it's coming right through the middle. Now what is the equation of this line? Here we are at the final answer. We're finally at the equation and I'm going to start, I'm going to write it right here. Y equals, here's the drum roll people. First of all, the slope. Well the slope we know is one quarter. And because it's an equation we're going to put x there. So y equals one quarter x and minus the y-intercept, which is 3 over 2. Or you could put 1 over 5, 1.5. It depends if your teacher wants you to keep it in a fraction form or as a decimal. But here is the answer that we were looking for for this fairly, well, seemingly complicated question. It's because there's a lot of stuff you have to know. And if parts of this lesson are confusing, please check out the videos. I'll, I'll put a few links so that you can click on them if you don't know about this formula or if you don't know about the midpoint formula or perpendicular lines. If you need to know all of that stuff first, it's a really good idea to check those out before you try and figure and wrap your head around this video. Okay? I hope I haven't confused you worse than you were already. If so, I apologize. Have a good day and good luck out there.